What's up, everybody? It's the Hardy Construction. You can find us at hardyconstruction.tumblr.com, youtube.com slash hardyconstruction, as well as facebook.com slash the Hardy Construction Videos Comp and director. Today's film is <laughs> uh, Amon, the Apocalypse of Devilman, uh, 2000. Amon, the Apocalypse of Devilman, also known as Devilman Volume 3, Devilman wow. Apocalypse, come on, wow. 2000, wow, it is a film about Amon, the devil. okay, it's directed by Kenichi Takashida, <laughs> written by Ritsuko Hayasaka, based on the Go Nagai comic, starring Shinji Takeda, Tomokazu uh, Seki Atsuko Enomoto. Um, You're doing very good with this. Thank you. <laughs> I'm on Devilman Moku Shiko Shiroku. <laughs> Damn, I fucked it up. Anyway, fear runs rampant throughout Tokyo with the revelation that demons, in fact, exist among us. Paranoia and the darker side of humanity boils onto the streets as people turn on one another. And wow. Then, you know, some guy turns into a, who's able to turn into a demon kills people and it goes crazy. So anyway, this is the third volume of the Devilman. His head it turns so, into a vagina. That first demon. That's this is the third volume of the Devilman uh, apocalypse, I guess anime manga or whatever. We reviewed the first two films, which is Devilman: The Birth and Devilman: The. Is this supposed Demon to Bird? be a, like it says it's a sequel or something? But it yeah, feels I can't like it's a completely different movie. I thought it was a direct continuation. It's it's stated as volume three, so who knows what that is? I mean, essentially, if you, it's good that we saw the first two just in case because we yeah. know who the characters are but there's a huge leap in plot that we haven't seen there's um, like so... four huge leaps in plot <laughs> so let's get into what this uh, what this film is about so Devilman uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, Amon the Apocaly Apocalypse of Devilman if you have, if you should listen to our review, we did the first two so that's like, a, it's nearly an hour long and we get into the history of Devilman and stuff yeah, I wanted really to introduce a lot, actually. I wanted to introduce Danny into the Devilman uh Series. It's a, a character that I liked a lot, and um, essentially, it's a it's a comic book based. Uh, I mean, it's a comic book did uh, that was done by Go Nagai in the seventies. Go and Nagai. It's about this kid named uh, Akira Fudo who has is best friends with this guy named Rio, and Rio tells him that devils used to live about ten thousand years ago, or about probably sixty five million. And years killed ago. his dad, who like was like Ice a Age and stuff like cave that. Cave explorer, or some weird thing. Akira's Akira's parents were killed by a demon that was while they were exploring the ice, the uh, I guess the tundras and stuff like that. What happens is that the demons basically froze in the tundras and stuff like that, and they're slowly and getting global, melted global out. warming is global releasing. warming. Yes. Um, <laughs> And and Devil and uh, Akira, I sound like I'm a crazy person. I sound like a person who's in the New York City subway just yelling this at people. If I heard and... someone <laughs> telling this, though, I'd start writing it down and I'd make a manga of it. Maybe that's how we'll go and the guy figured it out. So anyway, uh, <laughs> eventually, what happens to Akira? He gives in to being taken over by this demon called Amon uh, in the first film, and he turns into some sort of anti-hero. And that's essentially what Hybrid. this series is about. What, what I literally found out later is I actually started reading the comic book from the 70s, and it's mm -hmm. really good. And the two, the first two cartoon films that we saw, the first two original video animations we saw, do a right. great, dis a huge disservice to the <laughs> comic book. Yeah, I could imagine really, there's a lot more really character huge. development. I mean, it's they even explain that the demons sort of have a humanoid form, and why the demons look so freakish is that they they kind of are able to merge with like say trees or vampire bats and like things and that's why they turn into those they're able to like cross their DNA and their cells with other creatures to give them power sets so they right. turn they sort of mutate into these bigger beings what happens I'm I'm showing Danny these, these animations because eventually we're going to see the live action film and it's it's a doozy oh, no. of how horrible it is and I want Danny to understand what I went through when I saw it because <laughs> to see source material and I'm going to have you read like the first issue of the comic book just so you can see how okay. big the difference is. Anyway, so Devilman Volume Three. How does this uh, film start out? Uh, it is. What does it start out with this? Uh, it's the apocalypse, and yes. it's basically like a narration about how demons are everywhere. And then you see a person chasing a kid. Uh, what is that, the brother of the... You know, it's actually a little... No, no, it's actually... A, 
It's a little girl. It took me a long time to figure that out. I mean, you would know that wasn't the the brother of Mickey. Yeah, no, no, uh, but like, it doesn't film. really say who they are. That's the problem with these movies. They don't really like introduce characters. They just kind of like show them, and then they, they kind of just like, happen, right? I I just read a pretty good article. Uh, there's a website called Kitsuno. Oh Jesus, Kitsune to Neko. WordPress. Com. They did. It's called The Beautiful World, and they did a pretty spot on review for this film. Which essentially okay. says it's it's a good film, but if you don't know anything about the material, you're gonna be out of luck because you're not gonna know what the fuck's going on. Yeah, like I kind of figured out that they're like, you know, they are also devil men. They merge with demons, maybe, or they're just humans that hunt so, demons. So this is what I'm getting what happened because with uh, Devil Man: The Birth, apparently uh, there was a time where or there was like a special time. Remember when uh, Rio? Because Rio is this best friend of a, of Akira Fudo. He's this blonde guy. And Akira is this sort of... He's already morphed from the first film into this one to so this sort of, like, leather-clad badass kind of <laughs> anti-hero. He's, like, he's essentially a good guy, it's, but he's sort of... But like it's so head. annoying because it never, like, shows the development. It's just, like, he's a really <laughs> dorky guy, and then he's like this. So what happens is I guess the world is... Which I don't understand why people start writing towards the first half of this film because if people know that there's demons around, why did it take video for them to get sort of riled up to see... <laughs> <laughs> you know, to go insane and, and start riding right. in the street. If everybody within the first five minutes of the film was like, You must be a demon, I'll kick your ass. So it it, it does put a it does put an interesting spin on sort of witch trials, you know, that kind of thing where anybody can be these sort of uh uh human with a demon inside them. So everybody's kind yeah. of um and the only way you can tell is by drowning them, and if they drown, <laughs> yeah. it means they were human. <laughs> uh, it was so funny because I, I, when I had jury duty, they would show that stuff. Uh, they would show like, uh, "Oh, this is what was wrong with the judicial system in the ba in back." Really? Time. They would try to drown people, and apparently they didn't drown everybody. But I mean, they obviously drowned enough people that it caused a fucking problem. Well, they set them on sailing. fire and shit. Like, yeah, apparently, it, what was it we learned during um, um, what was that movie Hostel that there was like thirty times the amount of people killed. Like thousands of people got killed in in witch trials in Europe, like people. Oh, okay. <laughs> in Salem, <laughs> damn, it was a pretty bad number amount of people that got killed. But apparently, in Europe, it was even three, you know forty times worse over there. Anyway, so <laughs> it it gives this sort of apocalyptic feeling, and I and I think the film, like I remember, I told you, I texted you, I was like, this is a pretty nihilistic animation. Yeah, this film feels a lot more serious. Yeah, it's very much serious. Like, the first two were sort of campy, but this one is sort of exploitative horror. Like, it's really, like, dark. And... Yeah. Um, it's, like, it's like unflinchingly dark. Like, disgustingly dark. And I don't really feel it's that pretty much... pretty fucked up stuff happens in this. <laughs> I've seen a lot of Japanese cartoons in my day, like Fist of the North Star, which is, like, post-apocalyptic stuff. And that's not even, like, close to being as dark as this. That guy punches people and they explode, sort of like Story of Ricky. But that yeah. stuff is, like, fun compared to what happens in this film. This film, you're sort of like, Jesus Christ. It's, like, it's <laughs> unrelenting how dark this film is. So we're, we're, we're in Tokyo. It's, like, an undetermined year. Uh, apparently, the comic was in the 70s, so this is... They kind of update it, so it's more in the late 90s, like, since it took place in 2000. And, um... Grunge song and everything. I mean, Japan is all fucked up. It's, like... I mean, Tokyo's all messed up. It's grungy. It's dirty. There's people fighting on the buses. There's a. Uh, it starts out with this little girl who's running down the street. For the longest time, I thought it was a young boy, but he's running down the street away from this pervert with glasses who's laughing deliriously, <laughs> and uh, he turns into this giant sort of. I thought it was vagina almost cute. Thing. Yeah, I, I thought it was almost cute. The head of the monster because it has these big he's floppy like a vagina ears, like a rat. He has like a rabbit head, but the rest yeah. of his body does look like a vagina, and. Um, we're sort of introduced to these characters. This is what I explained in the in the hour long episode that we did about this. Is that this comic, I mean this animation, is based on partially based on uh, the dark side of the Devil Man, which is a, a remake comic of the um, original stuff that we saw. Like it, it was basically okay. re remade by this. Um, what is the illustrator? His name is Yu Kinutani. And I had, okay. I had showed you the toys. Remember the future model toys that came out from this F E W T U R E, which were like really high end sort of McFarlane toys, right? Um, versions of these, and it's like a it's really dark kind of gothic artwork. It's really beautiful artwork, and uh, they based it partially on the beginning of that comic, but they sort of just continued the storyline from the original comic book. Because oh, okay. I went and I actually looked up that comic book. I, it's it's a separate kind of comic book, The Dark Side of the Devil Man. 
and within five seconds, I mean, actually within the first page, they spoil something huge that happens in the, <laughs> in the, within 15 minutes of this film, and it's oh, bizarre. Oh, it's oh, like, what? yeah, the, well, the friends? Mickey, Mickey, Mikamura stuff. So, yeah. anyway, so this film introduces a bunch of characters out of nowhere, and this is what I can gather from it because I still haven't read that comic. I only read like, you know, the, uh, half of the first original Dark uh, Devil Man stuff. Is mm. that I think that Devil Man has gathered a group of other people that have been you know uh merged with demons and they're sort of like good devil men versus yeah but why know, don't we see them change into the devils i think it's because they <laughs> the director was lazy and just said let's get to the meat of the story of what's going to happen and this is a film essentially about loss and kind of yeah. giving into your primal horror urges so anyway that at the beginning of the film this mutant uh, el- uh rabbit vagina monster man like tries to kill or is like suddenly attacked by the little girl who is a demon herself half demon herself and this other girl who's able to shoot acid from her tits um, <laughs> which is funny because i guess from what i remember i think uh her name is um what is her name her name is um mickey no mickey is the main girl oh, uh, Mickey, mickey oh, okay. is the so it's Yumi, Yumi uh, Mik- uh, whatever. So anyway, there's this girl who has like acid. She has breasts. I think she was supposed to be really hot, like a really beautiful girl. And when she merged I wouldn't be attracted this- to someone who could shoot acid. Right. I think she was hot, but when she merged into this demon, it mutated her body. So she sort of has that now fucked up life where her breasts shoot acid. Like they're really disgusting. <laughs> yeah, that's. Sort of- I know people with that kind of fucked up life. That sucks when that happens. <laughs> and. Uh, Okay, it's, oh, it's a Mikiko, right? Mikiko Kawamoto. So, a, a female devilman who can emit powerful acids from her body. She's close friends with Akira and a mother figure to right. Yumi. And then Yumi's a, a, an orphan female devilman in her preteen. She acts like bait to help Miko and Akira. So, they introduce these two characters, and you're like, well, who the hell are these characters? You know, they're, they're demons themselves, which I guess is fine because it's sort of like. This is sort of what I told you about what, what should have happened with the birth. Is that they should just introduce Devil Man already and then go backwards from there? Right. Uh, so anyway, yeah, it was much better this way. What's funny is the rabbit monster, the vagina monster, is like brutally fucking up Makiko. Like he spl- almost splits her in half. Like he grabs her. Like this is why the movie is like exploitative because it's just violence for the sake of. Violence. I thought he was gonna split her vagina down the middle. I think that's what he was doing. He was like ri- trying to tear her in half, and then he just starts slamming her against the wall, and then like Akira walks in nonchalantly. He she's. <laughs> He's still knocking her against the wall. He's like slamming her against the wall. And he's just like too cool <laughs> for the room. I'm like, your friend is getting smashed against a fucking wall. And he's like, <laughs> you know, he's just walking in. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Like, yeah, he's not a very good guy. He's not. He's sort of a he's an asshole in this movie. Um, while that's going on, there's uh, Mickey is on the bus. Uh, Mickey is a girl that Akira was raised with. Uh, it's with like her his foster little, sister. With her little brother's it? foster sister. Because I think when his parents died. I guess he calls them aunt and uncle, so I don't know if they're actually blood related. I assume they're not really blood related, but they took care of him. And very good. While that's happening, she's you know she's coming home. While that's happening, um, Akira's no good friend Rio decides to have a television broadcast where he exposes Akira Fudo as the, <laughs> as the Devil Man. For what reason, I don't know. And Ro is what like. A jerk. Yo, what is, is like, his goal? Do we ever find out what the <laughs> ultimate goal is? I know what it is, and I'll tell you after. Um, but Rio uh, shows this video footage, although there was no fucking camera around that, that we saw of in the first film, unless he had set it up without, you know. Well, he's magical. That's true. He could do. They could have magical like uh, HD seventy cameras and stuff like that. And they mm-hmm. they have a partial remake of the club scene in the first film where he slaughters oh, a bunch of demons. What's that? What's that movie we saw where uh, the guy's a meth head and his friend gets a video of him on meth? So then his friend goes out to save him, and it turns. Oh, out you're talking like a, about um, oh, uh, uh, it's what, like it a mumble with, core. Yeah, yeah, it starts with an E, right? Oh no, um, starts with an R. Oh, Arrival okay. or no or, Arrival? <laughs> no, that's Arrival. the one with uh, that's the one with uh, um, with uh, oh, the whole thing. R- whatever in any case that movie very good <laughs> so what happens in in uh this is that there's a remake sort of how would you explain this remade version of that first one do you think it's a little bit over over violent compared to the original one no such thing as over violent especially <laughs> in an anime it was what? great uh it was a much better movie in my opinion than the uh, there's a part where he 
he when he turns to Double Man, he starts. And what did you think of this Double Man compared the design of this Double Man compared to the original one? I liked it a lot better. It was a lot less like Faust. Yeah, this one he sort of he looks more almost bug like but bat like at the same time. He's purple now instead of just being you know tan skin with red like bat wings on his head. He looks a lot yeah. more like he's very hyper stylized in this one, and he's more lean. But he's very cool looking. He's way more cool looking in this one. And I just yeah, remember the looks, part. He looks less like a fucking dork. There's, <laughs> there's like an insect woman, and he what does he do? He just tears her tits off. Yeah, that <laughs> was a great scene when he's tearing the tits off and eats them like an apple. Yeah, he's just eating them. It's like really. I mean, I would say that half of the demons. Um, actually, all the demon designs look a lot better. They're much more disturbing looking in this film compared to the first one. Because, uh, like, in the first one, the, the coolest demon in the first film was probably Jinmen. You know, that turtle monster that had the faces yeah, on the back? Yeah, that was cool. That like, was that was cool, cool. But in this one, the demons look, like, really fucking bizarre looking. Like, they 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 really went off the rails. And, uh, anyway, so what happens is Rose says, you know, you know, for the humans to kind of rise up and kill all the devil men. Which is unfortunate because people know that Ryo, I mean, people know that Akira lives with mickey makamura and her family so the first yeah. thing they decide to do i had sent you this youtube clip a while back ago and i think you saw it and you were like what the hell is this and then i guess now in context what what did you think of this scene because this is a i actually one of the don't mo- remember seeing it thankfully so right. it's good that i don't remember that i mean describe what happens in the scene please just just for anybody who's actually seen it to you the person who's seen yeah, this well it's pretty and- fucked up with the killing the kid with the bow and arrow and cutting off uh, Mickey's head on a stick. That's it was disturbing. <laughs> I mean, it's and, and the thing is, it's like it's graphic. It's a graphic murder of a kid, like a ten-year-old tw- kid on film. Like I've never seen. Like I, I don't think I've seen maybe kids get killed in film unless it was like a trauma film. But uh, it happened. Well, we saw uh, Legend of the Evil. A did that happen in there? Dying. What are you kid- kidding? Oh, those but those are. The, but no, no, I'm saying, but those are like 15, 16 year olds. So you kind of put off that they're like 17 year old kids they look more adult well I, compared to yes compared to a 10 year old kid like the worst graphic death i've seen was maybe um a serbian film with the baby getting fucked to death in that one. Oh jesus but this, yeah, that's one, fucked up. But this one it's like a 10 year old kid who sees his his foster brother on television turn into a monster and he pisses his pants and then he's running down the stairs. I remember the first time i saw this i don't know i don't know if i had seen it like a really shitty quality version because mm-hmm. the the shot is a long shot from far away, and he's running down the hallway, and he's calling for his sister, and then he just sort of stops in place after you hear a large thud. When I saw the original version, <laughs> I like I didn't know what happened. I just thought he just froze in place with a goofy expression on. And then when I saw imagine it, like, like imagine the um, <laughs> Steven Spielberg uh, version where it's like a walkie-talkie is touching his head. <laughs> but in, in the thing, what well, the thing is that he gets hit with a crossbow in his head which is which impales him to the wall and i was like what the f-? like i never i i never seen oh by the way like uh that. the movie's called resolution i was just looking it up at the same time anybody who says the first person thing that we were just trying to look for is called resolution which is a very good film justin good benson and aaron moria did that so this kid gets his head impaled to the you know in, into the wall and these i guess their neighbors come in and they decapitate him meanwhile mickey's up there and and i gotta say this this one scene uh, this that happens probably about two minutes or five minutes in in length is more disturbing than a lot of horror films I've ever seen because it's played yeah, off so as happy a, about it too. What happened? Oh, they're the so guys, yeah, because because these people are you know it's like human beings taking one you know and killing monsters and stuff like that. In their justification, right. they're killing demons. And I was trying to figure out if this was in the original comic book, and I guess it is of uh, the Go Nagai version. I don't know if it was just in the remake because in the remake comic book. It starts out like the first image is of Akira holding Mickey's head. And I was like, wow, that's a huge spoiler, you know, that, which sucks. So I guess it wasn't the original one, which, you know, wasn't like right. uh, it didn't shoot its load too early. But here, <laughs> like poor, poor Mickey, like <laughs> she's just this teenage girl. She doesn't know that her poor Akira. Well, yeah, obviously, poor she's Akira. Dead. Mickey's only got decapitated. Shit. But Akira makes it back home and he sees what what does he see when he <laughs> walks back to the burning Mickey, house? Mickey head on a stick. And really high up too. <laughs> they put her head on a stick, 
and they're they're lifting it up sort of like you would have a burnt effigy of somebody that you don't like but they're just lifting her head and all these disgusting town people are like cheering in the streets and I always laugh because they yeah, show it's these three pretty disturbing. You see the hair like blown around and shit. Yeah, they show these three guys and they're like, <laughs> and I always laugh. I always laugh at the big fat guy because he looks like Super Mario, and he's like <laughs> laughing and stuff. And there, and it's just like, it's just done so well that scene. It's like one of the most disturbing things I've ever seen for a, a cartoon film, if anything, animation. Yeah. And you just there's like there's a, the sound of the burning house and the sky is all red. Everybody's caked in this red light. And the part that bothered me the most is when they're <laughs> lifting her head and they're they're like spinning it in a circle. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're just waving it around like it's a float. And then from there, Akira like loses it. He just falls in because the big th- the big thing about the first two films is that Akira is sharing his body with this demon called Amon, and we actually get to see Amon in this film. And Akira yeah, but they, is like they don't really explain how Amon's right, able don't. to get back from hell or whatever. I think what happens is when he, um, the loss of Mickey is a person that he actually cared about, even though he's too cool for school now. He yeah. like actually the the loss of her is so traumatic to him that he just either doesn't give a shit anymore or he's giving it to a more primal hatred, uh, you know, a primal oh, okay. urge of hatred, and that what that's what unleashes. Um, uh, Amon, because you know he's able to cont- put it in check because he's a human being and he has people to care about. And when you kill right. the only person he gives a shit about, you know he can just kind of let loose. And the funny thing is, like from there we see Satan, or they call him Satan, uh, which is this multi-winged humanoid, which I guess is Satan from you know the biblical lore. And uh, also, oh, what would you explain as the monster that's next to Satan floating in the sky? Do you know? Oh, that? it's this adorable little head. <laughs> Psycho Jenny, or Psycho Genie is this, I guess, her right hand thing or whatever it is, which is this giant face on a pair of arms and legs with long hair, and she's like a psychic and stuff like that. But you don't know anything about this. You just see the character, and you're like, what the fuck am I looking at? It's very disturbing. Oh, so this character. is like, oh, this character has a whole backstory? Yeah, the the comic book explains everything. It's just that we're only seeing clips of this. We're seeing a best of, and oh, okay. so let me just get, let me just say what's going on. This is what's going to make you hate Ryo even more because Ryo is a dick in the first one. He's sort of an asshole in the second, but this is puts it over the top of how much. Of now he's just shit. straight up Satan. <laughs> Rio Rio is uh is able to turn into Satan. They don't show him turn into Satan in this film. They just show they just well, what show do you Rio mean turn into. Isn't he Satan? He is Satan. Sorry. Um, the whole reason Ryo is doing this is because he's a jealous bitch. <laughs> he's in love with Akira Fudo. He's okay. in love. I guess he's in love with her since the, he's in love with him for the longest time. And the thing is, Satan is uh, half is woman and man, so he doesn't have like a distinct um, sexual sexual um, organs. I guess I don't know. He does have breasts, but he has like you know a masculine face sometimes. Right. And so he's sort of uh, hermaphroditic when did they in that explain way. Explain that. It's in the in comic. The comic? Book. Yep. Oh shit! Well, we in gotta f- put a spoiler alert. No, people. I'm sure people who've seen Devilman already have seen this crap in the comic. But um, any listen, the only people who will watch or listen to this review for this are the people who read the comic or have any interest in Devilman. Anybody who like is into Japanese animation, they'll know about it. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of that kind of thing. Yeah. So Satan is in love with uh, Akira. I gotta read the comic to see in what. What a dickhead. Yeah, see, he wants. That's so he why he creates the apocalypse because he has a crush on Akira. Yeah, he's in love with him. So, cause so, and it's sort of close to the um, Christian mythology of Satan going against God, and but he falls in love with Rio. I don't know whether. That's the thing is I don't know why you know if Satan's been real the whole time and why does he have a father, a scientist father, and all is was that all bullshit? You know what I mean? Well, like, that's like the omen. Maybe he got born as a human. Yeah. That could be it. And why is he like doing all this? Like, well, what's the point? I say if you love somebody, but and you're a bitter, jealous motherfucker, and and it does it when you look at it in that lens, like it makes the ending sequence much more cooler. What happens like the very line of the last the last scene in the film, although it, it ends very differently in the comic book. It is very um, anticlimactically. It's it ends very anticlimactically um, in the film. Uh, the horrible, horrible live-action film. They actually do have <laughs> what happens in the comic book, 
Really? And I won't. Ex- I don't want to spoil what happens in there because it's even more fucked up. What happens? Like this is not- well. Apparently, what Golden Guy wanted to do with Devilman, he wanted to make a comic book about the horrors of war. That even if you're fighting for the right, you know, for the what you feel is right, war yeah. is always going to going to be horrible. Like people just fighting each other and just causing war. Because it back then when he made it, this was like after obviously many years after World War Two when Japan got nuked by the United States. Yeah. So they firsthand know. How bad it can be, you know, bombs blowing the uh, fuck yeah, out of you and sure. shit like that. Uh, America, the closest thing that we know on the home front about war is like 9-11, stuff like that. Uh, war is happening always, always in the Middle East and stuff like that. So his his interpretation of war is obviously, you know, he's it's a horrible thing. And it's a weird thing to take away from a guy who's turning into a monster and fighting other demons. But he sort of mm-hmm. that. That's what he was going for with the comic book. I got to really read the comic book. From what I read from the comic book, it's fucking. I'm fantastic. definitely want to read like at least the first couple issues. Yeah, there's only five volumes, so it's a pretty quick move. And okay. anyway, so what we're dealing with, uh, Akira, he seems like he's able to knock it off. He he walks around with Mickey's head, like, and to <laughs> me that that's for some reason I find that such a beautiful image. I don't know why that is, but I just love the image of this guy who cannot. I let think go. that's your inner serial killer. <laughs> Probably no, I just love the image of this guy who couldn't let go. Like he he seems like he's too cool for shit. But he's carrying around his ex-girlfriend's head. You know, <laughs> he's like, he can't let it go. And Danny, when I tell you this, you know the part how, how in this film, yeah. how he sees her head on that stick and he goes berserk? When yeah. you see what they did with that live-action movie, it's the worst oh, thing. I, it's, I, I, I can't, I can't describe. I saw that. I wanted to see how they did that scene. I, that's the I'm first like scene I went to. I'm scared to see it. I'm scared. I saw that scene, Danny, and I couldn't watch the movie after I saw it. It was five seconds, and I was like, I can't watch this movie. That's how bad it was because it was. Did just you continue like, to watch it or no? No, it's horrible. It's uh, so Danny. You I, haven't I, seen it all the way through yet. No, so no, no, no. I saw clips of it. I saw clips of it this weekend, and I was like, this is the worst movie. <laughs> I haven't even watched the film, and I know it was bad. But you have uh, to anyway. Watch it. So essentially, what the rest of the film is is Akira. He lets his body over to um, Amon. Amon. What would you describe Amon's look in this film? He's like a like a red dog version of Devilman. <laughs> yeah, he's like a giant red, like eight foot. He's supposed to be the hero of the Devilman, and he goes and he starts. You know, Akira is lost in his own thoughts. He's he's basically. Um, if you saw Get Out when the guy kind of was hypnotized and he falls into the 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 sinking, this is what yeah. Akira, this is what's sunk, happening to Akira. Place sunken place. Akira is stuck in this darkness. He's just like stuck. You know, he doesn't know what the fuck's going on. He's just kind of lost in limbo. Like uh, like uh, what was that movie with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio? Like in in um, ah, whatever. Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh yeah, Inception the dream movie Inception. Shit? He's sort of just stuck in this like this phantom zone. While Amon is taking over his body, so Amon returns to Earth. He's like in his original form, and all the all the other demons are like, "Oh, he, this is the guy who's hot shit in hell, right?" So let's kick his ass. And I mean, those demons boy, don't oh escape. Boy, did they lose? <laughs> yeah, they 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 didn't get any uh, good uh, fun out of fighting him. And there's this like other this giant demon that has long kind of tentacle haircut. He looks like a like a, a Rastafarian from hell or some shit like that. Salos. Um, Salos. He's actually a pretty neat design looking character. So Amon, what does Amon do to these demons when they decide to confront him? He basically explodes them. <laughs> it's like Story punches. of Ricky kind of thing. Yeah, he just explodes them with punches and it rips them apart. It's great, actually. It's a really good good fight scenes. Well one of the one of the more grotesque sequences is when he actually finds uh Yumi, you know the little girl demon from the beginning that's helping. Oh yeah, Akira. when he eats her? Oh my god. <laughs> The part that always makes me laugh about that scene is that he finds Yumi because she was in the same building, her and um, Mikiko, when you know the building collapsed after they uh, you know confronted Devilman and stuff like that. And she's underneath this large slab. And as an as an um, as a person watching this film, you're like, oh, he's gonna part of him is gonna remember Akira's gonna remember to you know lift her up and help her, and he's gonna there's gonna be this big internal <laughs> struggle. And he lifts her up, and it cuts. T- it cuts to these two demons looking at them for huh? some reason i couldn't stop laughing at that scene because there's like this big fat demon and there's like this other demon with like <laughs> ram's horns and they're just looking at it off screen 
Right. And then he picks up, uh, he just picks up uh, um, Yumi, and you're like, oh, okay, so now he's gonna remember. And then it cuts back to those two demons. Yeah, I really wasn't you... expecting him to eat her. <laughs> you hear a chomping sound effect, and those two demons are shocked. And I couldn't stop laughing at that scene <laughs> because it's like monsters from hell. And they're shocked at this demon eating a little girl demon. Like, for some reason, like, it's just the look on their faces because their eyes bug out. They're like, holy shit, you know, that kind of look. And I was like, that could have stopped laughing how stupid it looked on their faces. And, you know, he's, it's like graphic. Like, he's eating this child, like, in half. And he even yeah. the arm falls off and he decides to pick it up and starts eating it like a leg bone and shit. And I was like, like an arm bone, I guess. But I was like, oh my God, like, it's really gross. And the, yeah, he's, about to, he's about to do it to Makiko as well, but then all those other demons start running away, and he just fucks them up. And then he just gets into this giant fight with, uh, was it Salos, or whoever the Salos. other demon is? And even that, like, I mean, it's there's stuff you just cannot do in live-action film, even with CG and stuff like that, because he's throwing a whole train car at the other demon, and you know, it's crashing through, through a building. building. Yeah, like they that. couldn't do that. It's but, you know, incredible. I just wish there was... I mean, this movie definitely does it better, even though it doesn't have a backstory at all. But, like, right. I just wish there was more, like, story. What I think... I What I wish they had more of was more of Mickey to put the impact of what happened to her. I think um, right. for the scenes that are in the film, because there are, like, these sort of flashbacks of of uh, Akira with Mickey at the beat, you know, at sunset. You know, that it's basically given us a visual interpretation of what... He, you know these moments that he lost with her. Not not in any of the films really. We saw his relationship with her other than him being a pervert, saying some perverted shit to her in the I second her film. Underwear. Right, and in this one, at least we see sort of flashbacks. So this film is trying to get across the point of this guy who's losing, who lost his humanity because he lost the only sort of connection to this world. And there's that scene, which I think actually works when he's in the classroom with her. This is after she he, she's died and he's gotten his ass kicked by Amon. And they're in the right. classroom together, and she doesn't talk anymore. She just gives him this kiss, and he's like crying through the whole scene because, like, he felt like her whole he's he's the reason why her whole life has been miserable. And that actually made me feel sad for a fucking cartoon about giant monsters yeah, fighting no, each it other. Yeah, no, made me sad too. It made me legitimately sad because he's crying because he actually felt remorse. And his character kind of comes off as a dick in the beginning of this film. It's only like a 52, 52 minute film, but Not like. Even. Yeah, within that, oh, it's like about forty, right, forty-five minutes and stuff like that. And within that one scene alone, I felt like I felt really bad for that character because he showed a large amount of remorse because, like, all the shit that he's been going through, which has happened off screen, which you don't get any character um, development other than that one scene. Yeah. And but I thought that that one scene alone, if they had a couple more scenes like that, not just necessarily him feeling yeah, bad well, about it. Yeah, well, that's why I think this movie is so much better than the other two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They actually have, you know, character moments in this film, even if it's sort of stretched out and you're supposed to fill in the gaps. Um, I think that that scene works really, really well for what it is. And, uh, you know, but the the fight with him and, and uh, Salos, like, even that last scene when he punches a hole through Salos... And, like, Salo's dead face like, was really disturbing to me. Because, like, the thing about this film was, like, the dead bodies <laughs> look really fucking weird. Like, Salo's jaw is all slack. Because in real life, people, you know, when they die, they go, they, they lose their jaw. Their jaw opens, basically, because you, you're not and they using your themselves. muscles. To... Yeah, exactly. I don't think Salo's shit himself from this. But he was too shocked to shit his pants. You know so what cool if after he killed Amos, you see Amos <laughs> shit out the little girl? Who the hell is Amos? <laughs> No, and not Amos, Amos, <laughs> Amon, Amon, Amon. Isn't Amos like a racist character or something? I don't know. Anyway, don't Amos know. and Andy. I don't know why that yeah, remember Amos? My head. Amos and Andy were the two. Uh, they would. It was a racist show from the nineteen twenties, uh, I think, a radio show. Oh jeez. It was white. Two white guys playing black characters, and they did the most racist. <laughs> they, <laughs> you know that voice that uh, Gilbert Godfrey does? You know that hello there. That's what yeah, Amos, yeah, yeah. That's what Amos and Andy was. If that oh, Amos Jesus. was in this movie, this would be completely different. <laughs> like, yeah, that would change the movie. <laughs> play with hello there, Devil Man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so so Amon fights uh, Devil Man in this sort of mind fight. They're fighting in his thoughts and. Uh, which gives, I would assume, it gives Akira the upper hand, which is why he becomes super powered and he fucks him up. 
and uh, right. he he does fuck him up pretty good. But it's a it's a good like sort of battle animation. You know, it's like a it's a cartoon where you know shit is happening. And the reason why I wanted Danny to see this is because we're setting up to see the live action film in, in uh, <sighs> I two really episodes. I really am like dreading it. To I'm honest. making it sound horrible, so it might be you know a good movie to you. No. And then the final conflict in the resolution of this film, which is a non-resolution, is that Akira. I don't think he knows that Rio is Satan. He just sees no, Rio as know. Rio. He must know. He goes up to Rio, and Rio obviously is looking at him. Rio is in in male form. I don't know why Rio wouldn't you know turn into female form. I guess maybe he you know well, like because he knows him as a male. Right, but I I don't know if he would try to entice him as a woman. You know what I mean? Because he's in love with him. So maybe, but maybe Satan doesn't you know. He doesn't care about, <laughs> you know. He wants Akira to uh, um, accept him for whatever form he's in, and Akira right. just walks past by him, and that's how the film ends. And I was like, that's sort of a bizarre. I, it's more. I think it's a more powerful ending in the fact it seemed that more like uh, this will be continued. Right. So I guess they just didn't decide not to do that. But I think it's powerful in the fact that he just walks by him, that he won't accept his love. But the thing is, I had to fill that gap because I read that up. Anybody else would be like, didn't this guy just set you up and expose you and your fucking girlfriend and his her family is dead? <laughs> and you just walk <laughs> past by him? Like, you think that's much more powerful to just be like, fuck you and walk past he by him? He wouldn't somebody? have been able to fight him anyway. The original ending uh, that's in the live action film and in the comic books is much, much more... Um, it has a resolution to it. Oh, just like that movie, the resolution. And the film ends yep. with him walking into the darkness, which leads to a song I'm like completely obsessed with. Like I oh, love the, this the Japanese grunge song. Yeah, it's like a Japanese grunge song that happens at the end of the film. And uh, the Pretty guy is at, for this movie actually. It is because it's like it's dystopic. It's depressing. Um, it's called. It's by a guy named Manga Head. Um, I cool. think he's like, I think he's an artist, like a musician that does. He, I think he did the actual whole soundtrack. That's for like the, film. the Radiohead in in Japan. <laughs> yeah, he actually did a very cool soundtrack for this film. He did, I think, that whole, all the music and the music in the film is like really good. It's like really dark, like. Very oh, and I gotta fucking... say, it's it's so much better to see this in the Japanese than with the English. Dub. Yes, because the English dub oh that we God. saw, the acting was incredibly horrible. Maybe um, that's part of why I liked it better too, because I mean the Japanese actors are good. Yeah, I the Japanese. Well, like, from what I could tell, like you know, I can't understand them, but like they sound good. The song uh, I come trying. I th- I thought I found the name of the song in, uh, but it's anyway. The our artist is called Manga Head, and assume that's like the only one that comes up on YouTube. But I even if you don't watch the fucking movie, that song is fucking awesome. <laughs> like it's a, it's just such a good song, and it's like so sad. I don't know what the fucking lyrics are. I actually tried to look up the lyrics. Mm. But uh, it's so appropriate for this film. Uh, I think, let me see what it's called. Uh, well, while I'm looking that up, what, what were, are there positive things for you with this film that you liked? Or uh, I mean, it's kind of like what I said about the other films, but much less so. But okay. yeah, it's a really cool movie visually and everything. But in this one, I actually like the story. To some okay. extent, and I just, they still need to develop the characters. Like, but they did a lot more in this one than the other ones. Yeah, like, I feel like each one's gotten a little bit better. Okay, I, I think yeah, I think this is ridiculous. I think this is uh, they got a lot more plot into this film than the first one did. The first one was just sort of like let's see Akira get bullied, and then let's see him turn into Devil Man like forty minutes into the movie when it's like a fifty-minute film. Um, the song is called. May no my no Suduki by Mangahead. So it's, just look that up. It's a very good song. And uh, yeah, I understand what you're saying. They they could have. I think they could have rounded out more character stuff in this film. Uh, that was important. Do you know what I mean? Needed, I mean, they jumped needed. from like they jumped from normal world to apocalypse. Everyone knows there's demons. Like there was no like. How how did they find that out? Like you know. Yeah, that was the thing I didn't notice. Like in the demon bird. Remember the one that we saw the demon bird like. The film ended with the demon essentially dropping dead, like this wom- this demon bird called Cyrene, uh, which I really I didn't mention that it means like siren, like a bird. Is siren that the bird. one that merges with the Triceratops thing? Yeah, and then she's dead, right? And I'm like, yeah. they just leave her body there. Like, if you're walking in the woods and you see that, wouldn't you be like, what the fuck am I looking at? It's a it's a, <laughs> it's a rhinoceros with a woman maybe, coming maybe, out of the maybe it uh, neck. disintegrates back into the hell or something. I guess it could be, but she was frozen there when I saw that shit, and I you know I. I 
I, I'm assuming that more demons merge with people from the second film to whatever happens in this film. And that's why people are so freaked out about it. But and it does say it at the beginning of the film. There's like this crawl at the beginning that explains that you know shit has gone down in Japan with demons and stuff like that. Well, you know, if all the if every anime and manga that happened in Tokyo was real, like it would have been gone so long ago. <laughs> yeah, it would have been wiped out. There's so many things that happened there. They love. I, that's the thing with Japan is like a lot of their. F- a lot of their culture and their uh, comic books that deal with, you know, destruction because they actually went through that shit. You know, a f- yeah. two, two bombs nuked two of their cities off the fucking face of the earth. Yeah. And, yeah. like, that's why a lot of their material has to... D- they're very, you know... A lot of their works are very dark and, like, there's no no bones about it. You know what I mean? It's very yeah, weird. Fucking, like, Godzilla, like a gigantic radiation monster just like destroying cities and shit i wonder if they have uh paintings of fruit bowls that are like about nagasaki because if danny and i went to a <laughs> remember we went to that gallery i think it was a a spinoff of the metropolitan museum of art and it was a Which giant one was that? we went remember we it was a spinoff it was like another mini gallery and remember Wait, we did we the, go to the modern met place no way no a museum of uh, i'm sorry metropolitan museum of art and there was a yeah, huge yeah Remember and there was a another, huge. There's a contemporary Met also. Right, that's the one where we went to. This is this is how bad that was for you. Remember, it was a huge painting of a bowl of fruit that was unfinished. And what was the reason for that painting? Oh, I don't remember. Was it, it was about, about? Was it about Nagasaki? No, no, it was about nine eleven. Oh Jesus! <laughs> <It was> like <laughs> Danny and I were in this the- in this uh, museum. It was a giant painting. I don't know how big it was. It was like it was like feet across. And it was a bowl of fruit. It was just a bowl of fruit, and it was unfinished, like a, like an acrylic or I don't know what kind of painting it was. And and Danny goes and reads the description, and he just gets disgusted, and he goes, "Read that description." And I and I read the description, and it, and it's essentially what it said is this painting is um, supposed to depict the loss and horror of 9/11. It was a fucking bowl of fruit, unfinished <laughs> painting, and I was like, "What does this got to do with 9/11?" Like. Was the guy painting on the side of the fucking Twin Towers? And that's they why it's unfinished. Make, like, it doesn't make any sense. It was they so, just make some painting and they're like, mm, how can we get this into the it was so <laughs> It was so ridiculously offensive that this dumb painting of fruit. And if I'm sure the guy's a good painter, but that was like the biggest bogus shit I ever read in my yeah. life about some fucking yeah, that, bowl that of fruit. Yeah, that is actually making me annoyed all over again. I don't even remember that. <laughs> So it's sort of like that's what you guys do. Like in Japan, they actually make a lot of seminal works about you know because in Japan there's been a lot of bad shit. Also, Japan has done a lot of bad shit too. You can look at you know, yeah, well, I know. Obviously, rape of Nanking, but also in Japan they had you know they sort of got their shit together. But there's also like three eleven when, and I don't mean the cool Rastafari and Jamaican or rap group. I mean the actual <laughs> like um, there was like a flood, a tsunami that killed i think right. about ten thousand people like that's a lot yeah, of fucking and earthquakes people earthquakes and yeah i mean they things, they're yeah. i mean they've given it as good as they got in the back well it's they have horrible. an amazing culture for all that they do so. it's an they have an interesting culture and that's sort of like why i love their animation but they you know the, there's been a lot of suffering and they've made a lot of people suffer i'm not just saying all the people as a whole but just that japan has been pretty much throughout history you know there, there's a lot of stuff that's happened in japan and what japan's I done have, so i have to go there one day <laughs> yeah me too um but this tour this sort of film that's like a big long diatribe or a big speech we did about japan but if you watch this film this is like um this is a snapshot of their sort of animation process in the 90s when it was a little bit more exploitative you know sort of like uh just like any the u.s has been exploitative frank with miller and stuff like frank that. miller vibes yeah it's it's very dark and it's very unflinching and that's why i appreciated about this maybe i was like some sort of teenager that was like yeah man blood man horror man you know stuff like that <laughs> but older you know being an older man now i'm like i'm watching it going wow this is you know a pretty unique animation experience that i've seen and i enjoyed it you know what i mean like i won't lie it's not a perfect film by any means but the animation is pretty top notch. The character designs are great. The music is really good in this film. There's a very, there's a, this is a, this is an animation film where the mood is set from the first minute of it, and it's very adult, yeah. and it's very dark, and it's it's like definitely it's fun unsettling. To watch. Yeah, what it's fun you, to watch. I would give you, this film um, because the thing yeah. is, I'm I'm gonna give it a higher rating because I'm like I love the whole look of it and everything. I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten. 
running to warn your sister about your foster brother and <laughs> hit in the head with an arrow and get stuck to the wall with a goofy expression on your face. <laughs> okay, I actually agree with that rating. I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10, uh, ripping off a demon's tit and eating it like an apple. Very good. With that, Danny, what's the final word? 100% oats.